While capturing a live bumblebee might sound a little scary, bumblebees by nature are less aggressive than many other bee species, and your risk of being stung is very small as long as you don't mishandle them. We recommend MBBA participants use a combination of two common techniques for collecting bumblebees called netting and hand capturing. Using an insect net to catch bumblebees is especially useful in early spring, on windy days, and when bees are flying or out of reach up high or in thick vegetation. Each MBBA participant will ultimately develop his or her own techniques for netting, but there are some general guidelines to follow that will increase your success. Always hold your net in swing-ready position. Keep one hand just below the net and the other at the back or middle of the pole. Hold the tip of the net against the pole with the hand that is closest to the head so it doesn't drag or get caught in vegetation, but let it go as soon as you start your swing. Don't stand too close. Standing right up next to a clump of flowers may scare bees off. Be a few steps away, close enough to lean forward or take one or two steps before making your swing. Move slow but steady. Bees have good eyesight. Try to prevent your shadow from passing over a perched bee and scaring it off. Bees focused on feeding are usually easier to catch, whereas flying bees can be tricky to net. Once you start your swing, don't hesitate and always follow through. Bees flying low to the ground are better caught by slapping the net over them and letting them fly upwards into the extended net. Once a specimen is inside your net, immediately flip the funnel of the net over the metal ring to keep it from escaping. Removing bumblebees from a net can be intimidating at first until you get comfortable with the technique. Unless you physically grab a bee or trap it against your hand, you are not going to get stung. You can then grab the net just above the bee and your hand will be protected by the bunching of the material. Bring the container up inside the net and through your hand holding the netting, take care to keep a tight seal around it. Trap the bee inside the container with the bottom of the net pulled tight over the opening Tap and shake the container to knock the bee to the bottom of the container. It is important to continue to tap and shake the container throughout the process as the bee is easier to trap when it is knocked to the bottom of whichever container you are using before slipping the lid on. Hand capturing. Hand capture in a vial, cup, or jar. Bumblebees that are settled on a flower and focused on feeding are relatively easy to sneak up on and capture in a lidded container. With practice, you will be able to catch just the bee and not the whole flower. Hold both the container and partially closed lid, ready to shut, in your hands and slowly approach the bee from the rear, being careful not to cast a shadow and scare it off. Bring the container right up close behind the bee, quickly scoop it in, and close the lid. Once you have a bee captured in a vial or cup, take a pre-numbered field specimen label that has been provided and slip the small label into the container with the bee and the data form in a large plastic bag containing the vials of bees being careful not to release your specimen. For each site you visit, a site survey form is filled out and submitted along with your voucher specimens. Place a container in a small Ziploc bag along with your completed site visit form. If you collect multiple specimens during one site visit, you should put all of your specimen containers into one larger Ziploc bag with a single site visit form. Label the plastic bag with the date, the site code or site name, the location, and the collector's name and place it in a small cooler outfitted with an ice pack. Once you're home, transfer the bags of live voucher specimens into your freezer and leave them there overnight to ensure the bees are dead and ready for pinning or processing for dry storage. Please make sure your freezer is below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Pinning. Remove bees from the freezer and allow time to dry. If crystals have formed, pat dry with a paper towel before pinning. Pin the bee between the two front wings, called the tegula, to the right hand side. Do not pin in the middle of the bee as the middle of the bee is important for some identification purposes. Pin against a hard surface and use your fingers to slide the bee towards the top of the pin about a third of the way from the top so labels can fit below. Make sure to pin the pre-numbered field specimen label provided by the MBBA with the bee. This is the only label that you need to pin along with the bee.